There are now less than two weeks before Ontario votes for potentially a new government. And tonight, with the clock ticking down, the leaders of the three main parties went at it one last time. Because you haven't been paying attention to everyday folks and what they need Andrea, to full build day, a good life in our province. And I'm sorry, Mr. Full Ford, day kindergarten. $18 you know, a year in tax let's, breaks. Let's, let's, Andrea, let's, let's let Mr. Ford have a say. Have a say. Life more affordable. Let's your your have plan a would annihilate the middle class. Uh, thanks very much for, for the question. Sounded a lot like that tonight over everything from taxes and the economy to issues of honesty and trust. Not surprising, really, given the stakes here. An electorate that seems to be ready for change and two very different different choices from the status quo. As you saw, the energy of the debate was often passionate, but there was room for lots of substance, too. Our Hannah Thibodeau was watching. Out-of-towners got a brief lesson in Ontario politics. It was a loud and boisterous crowd outside the debate, a race that is really between two political parties. Doug Ford's progressive conservatives entered the campaign looking like they would walk to a majority. But Ford has lost significant ground to the NDP's Andrea Horvath. They don't trust the NDP. Businesses, Bob, are terrified. Now neck and neck, he clearly knew he had to be ready for prime time in tonight's final televised debate. Trying to look relaxed, no tie. And he knew who his competition was, repeatedly attacking Horvath accusing the NDP of attracting extreme and radical candidates. They have radical activists as candidates that get their inspiration from Adolf Hitler. Not true, they get their Mr. Ford. They got, they got Ford, it right there. Inspiration. True. In fact, this debate was in many ways the Horvath show, a big test for her. She was grilled about her controversial candidates, the $1.4 billion costing error found in the NDP platform and the ghost of Bob Ray's government and the discontent Ontarians felt for that NDP government more than two decades ago. This is not 1990, and I am certainly not Bob Ray. Kathleen Wynne, whose Liberals are trailing the other two parties, was trying to hold on to any seat she possibly could, starting the evening with an apology, sort of. I'm really genuinely sorry that more people don't like me, but I am not sorry about all of the things that we're doing in Ontario to make life better. Polls suggest there is volatility. And while advanced voting has started, a lot of people make up their minds in the last week. So the stakes were extremely high on the stage behind me tonight. Hannah Thibodeau, CBC News, Toronto. All right, let's bring in CBC News poll analyst Eric Grenier. He was watching with uh, this debate with me closely. Eric, what do you think that this changed tonight, if anything? I don't know if it did change anything, because the challenge for Doug Ford was to ensure that he could stop the forward momentum that Andrew Horvath's New Democrats have been experienced since the beginning of this campaign. And to do that, he had to set in the mind of voters, people who are watching, that the NDP, while they might represent a certain kind of change, was not one that uh, was worth going over to take. And it wasn't clear if he was able to do that. His messaging hasn't changed very much since the beginning of the campaign when he was making the case that he was the only person who could provide the change from uh, Kathleen Wynne and the Liberals. The rhetoric, rhetoric that he used during the debate, talking about annihilating the middle class, destroying the economy, a little bit hyperbolic and not sure that when you see the New Democrats doing so well in the polls and that Andrew Horvath is more popular than Doug Ford, that it's a message that is going to resonate. So are we really in a two-horse race at this stage? Was there anything that Kathleen Wynne could have done tonight to sort of save this for herself and for her party? Well, her party is in a really dangerous place for them because they have dropped so far in the polls that uh, really we're just talking about how many seats they are going to be able to save uh, because uh, things are not going very well and they're being squeezed on the right by the PCs and on the left uh, by the NDP. So the challenge for her was to still be relevant in this debate. She tried to rise above some of the fighting between Horvath and Ford. It wasn't uh, very effective in the sense that a lot of voters might not be listening to her anymore.